Our seas and oceans cover almost three quarters of the Earth's surface and an estimated 80% of all life lives within them. Yet every day, marine environments around the world are facing an unprecedented onslaught. Thousands of pirate ships are roaming the seas in search of treasure, one of the world's most precious resources, fish. Identified as among the most serious threats to the world's fish stocks, illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, or pirate fishing, is putting huge pressure on marine ecosystems and the food we take for granted. These operators don't respect fisheries laws, safety and hygiene standards are ignored, no taxes are paid on their catch, and human rights abuses on these ships are commonplace. Illegal and highly damaging fishing gear are often used, simply to minimise effort and maximise profit. Such gear can destroy crucial habitats and are commonly indiscriminate in what they catch. Once the catch is on board, it is sorted by the crews who keep only what is considered valuable on the international market. Up to 90% of what is caught, known as bycatch, is simply dumped back into the sea, dead. Pirate fishers contribute to undermining global fisheries management. Some scientists predict that we will see the collapse of all species that are commercially exploited today by around the year 2050. We are running out of fish. They are extremely elusive and evade being caught or prosecuted by using a number of legal loopholes. Pirate fishing vessels are fully aware that they are operating illegally and avoid being identified by carefully hiding their names and call signs. Working together, several vessels will operate under the same name and only one license. If detected, they simply rename their boats and often re-flag them with a flag of convenience belonging to one of the many nations that operate an open registry. Countries that sell flags of convenience are essentially selling the use of their flag to foreign-owned fishing vessels for a small fee. In return, they are supposed to ensure that the vessels flagged to their country abide by the international laws of the sea. However, many are notorious for lacking the ability or will to control these vessels, allowing them to steal with impunity. The problem of flags of convenience is global. They can be found everywhere. But increasingly what we see is vessels that fly flags of convenience are those very same ships that are operating in the waters of poor developing countries that are firstly often rich in fish stocks, but more importantly, they're not able to enforce their own fisheries laws because they lack capacity, they lack the money, they lack the strength to do so. So these operators are exploiting the weakness of poor developing countries to provide for their own profit. The chances of getting caught are tiny compared to the massive profits that can be made. These pirate fishers are stealing an estimated $1 billion worth of fish every year from African waters alone, and in turn are depriving some of the poorest countries in the world of a crucial source of income, employment and food. Since 2003, the Environmental Justice Foundation has worked to document and expose IUU fishing, particularly in West Africa. When vessels fish illegally, they are not simply stealing fish. Coastal communities throughout Africa depend on fish not only as a major source of food and protein, but also as an important means of income. Pirate fishers are literally stealing the lives of these people. In many coastal regions, fishing and fish smoking are some of the very few ways that men and women can earn money. This traditional way of preserving fish has been used by the women of these communities for thousands of years. But if the men don't bring back the fish, the women have no means of making a living and cannot afford to feed or educate their children. Fish business is the only business that these communities have, and it is seriously under threat. <laughs>
All countries have an exclusive maritime zone, but throughout Africa, these waters are not being respected. In particular, many countries have specific zones reserved for local fishermen and as fish breeding areas. Yet these are frequently invaded by pirate fishing vessels. Une fois la nuit tombée, il avance vers les côtes pour draguer là-bas. Après le bon matin, vers les 4h, 5h, 6h du matin, ils sont en train de ressortir. Pour avoir des stocks, il y a des films. Parce que moi, je suis sur ma terre. 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 Je suis As well as stealing fish, the illegal vessels frequently destroy valuable nets and often threaten the lives of local fishermen. This boat has been caught illegally fishing off the coast of Sierra Leone. It is a rare arrest for the local navy and is a result of a close collaboration between the Sierra Leone government, the Environmental Justice Foundation and local fishing communities. Like many illegal vessels, it has bought a license to fish to give itself the appearance of legality. In this case, the license was received only the day before. Yet immediately, it began illegally fishing far inside the inshore zone reserved for local fishermen. And to hide its identity, all names and markings are deliberately covered. Once an illegal vessel such as this has hauled its catch aboard, it is dropped below deck where the crew sort through it, keeping only those species that have high international market value. Fish that are vital to local markets and species integral to the health of the marine ecosystem are simply wasted. This stolen fish is not going back to Sierra Leone. It'll be packed into boxes and frozen for export. The label doesn't say that the fish comes from Sierra Leone or even West Africa. It is labeled Republic of Korea, the other side of the world. To avoid inspection and taxes, pirate fishing vessels rarely go to port. Once the catch is packed and frozen in the hold, it is transshipped at sea onto refrigerated cargo ships, bringing food and supplies in one direction and taking the valuable catch in the other. These cargo ships allow pirate fishing vessels to remain at sea for months and sometimes years. Once the stolen fish is brought to land, it is then laundered into the legitimate fish markets of the world, its origins virtually untraceable. Consumers will be unaware of the origin of their fish or of the countries who suffer the devastating effects caused by this kind of activity. This vessel is just one of thousands of fishing vessels operating illegally across the world today. The majority go about their work untouched. EJF is campaigning for an end to flags of convenience for fishing vessels and the associated support vessels. There's a disincentive built in here for legitimate fishing operations to do what they should do as long as these other vessels that fly flags of convenience have this unfair advantage. We need to see leadership on a global scale. Ultimately what we want to see is this written into international law, the United Nations Law of the Seas. In this way, we can make sure that every fishing vessel is flagged by a responsible state that will take measures to oversee its operations. It will also bolster and support the global initiatives that are so desperately needed now to ensure sustainable fisheries management and that we do not wipe out the remaining fish stocks that we all depend upon.